Welcome to worship. It is such a joy to have you join with us today, especially on this day as we recognize our graduating seniors. This is going to be an exciting and wonderful service as we offer our prayers and offer our support for our seniors as they move forward into whatever it is that God has for them next. But we've gathered to worship. If you have created a sacred space where you are that includes candles, I encourage you to go ahead and light those. We do this each and every week as a reminder of God's constant and abiding presence with us. And as I pour the water, I invite you to remember God's claim on your life, to know that God looks upon you every single moment and says, you are mine. You are holy, you are sacred, you are valued, you are worthy, you are God's beloved child. And it is out of that deep love that God has for us that we come together seeking to know this God who loves us. And then we're invited to live out that love everywhere we go. We serve an incredible God. Amen. I want you to take just a moment and prepare yourselves to to calm down, to settle down, to get comfortable wherever you are. Go ahead and close your eyes and take in a few deep breaths and simply begin to be aware of God's presence right here, right now with you. God, we thank you for all the ways that you remind us of your love for us. We thank you for the promises each new day brings. And we thank you that you are always with us to guide us through each day. So, God, we offer this time of worship for your honor and for your glory as we seek to know you. This is our prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. In Christ alone. My hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm to the fiercest draught and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. Christ alone. 
Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Here in the power of Christ we stand. Good morning. This is a super special day. We're celebrating our seniors who are graduating from high school today. What do you think graduation means? Graduation means that it's when you're like done with your school. You, when it, like when you're done with your school, you um, are you move on to the next level or you get your job. I think graduation means that you're getting out of the school and you don't get, go to it anymore. It means to like go from one grade to the next, like third to fourth or fifth to sixth. I think graduation means accomplishing something or passing something like school. What are some things that you have graduated from? I have graduated from preschool. I've graduated from kindergarten to first. I've graduated from preschool, um, elementary, and that's pretty much it. Kindergarten, kindergarten first grade. I mean, uh, not kindergarten, pre-K. First grade, pre-K, pre pre baby school. We graduate from all kinds of things. Preschool, kindergarten, maybe from a big car seat to a booster seat. Maybe fifth grade graduating elementary school or middle school. But today we're talking about high school graduation. Can you imagine going through all the grades? Preschool, kinder, first, second, third, fourth, all the way through 12th grade. Can you imagine being 17 or 18 years old and finishing high school? That's what these amazing men and women have done. And now they'll all be starting something new. Maybe they'll be going to college or it might be close or far away. Maybe they're gonna start a new job. Maybe they're gonna be living somewhere different, maybe away from their parents. Have you ever gone anywhere away from your parents? I have gone to Glen Lake Camp and school without my parents. I've gone to my Grammy's house without my parents, my friend's house, sleepovers, um, a pool. I have like um, spent the night with my grandparents and I go to school every day and I do camps and stuff, but yeah, it's good. Did you miss your parents? What kinds of things do you do when you miss them? Um, when I miss my parents or family, pets, um, I just think about them a little bit. And like, I know I'm gonna see them sometimes, so yeah. What or who is always with you no matter what? God. God is always with us. No matter what we're doing, where we go, who is with us, God is always with us. We can't ever graduate from God, and we'll spend our whole lives learning more about God and building on the faith that started when we were really young. So as we celebrate these seniors graduating high school and celebrate that they will never graduate from God, what are some other things that they should remember as they go off to college? I think what you should remember about God is that he's always there with you and you can always talk to him about hard things that are going on. Uh, one thing I think you should keep doing, always work hard, it pays off in life, and remember that God is always right next to you. You need to know addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, which I know all of that. And you should always eat your veggies. These are all important things that we hope our seniors will remember. And we especially hope they remember 
how much their church family loves them, that we're always here for them, and most importantly, that they still and will forever be a beloved child of God. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for these amazing children and these amazing seniors. Please be with them on all their journeys to grow closer to you. Bless them and their families as they continue to grow in your love. Amen. Thank you, Laura and Carrie. And thank you, students, for those wonderful words of wisdom um, that you gave to all these graduating seniors. Uh, this is always a tough time of the year for me because we come together to recognize and celebrate these seniors, but it also reminds me that our time together is coming to an end. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with, these, with this class, and we've had a lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of joys, a lot of pain, and I wish them the best on this journey. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to this year's graduating class. Alec Barrett. Alec will be graduating from Georgetown High School. After graduation, Alec plans to attend UT Austin in the fall, where he will major in economics and environmental science. Alec was born into this church, was baptized here, and attended the learning tree. FUMC Georgetown has always been a place where he felt loved. It has helped him to develop his relationship with God, learn his grace, and learn the value of serving. This church has allowed him to make friends and cherished memories. It has helped him to develop his beliefs and values, and he is so thankful for the impact it has had on his life. Sage Boff. Sage is graduating from Eastview High School and will be attending Texas State University in the fall. She is majoring in art and art design. Sage and her family moved to Georgetown and joined FUMC in 2004. Sage has grown up in the church. She attended the Mops Nursery and the Learning Tree with Ms. Dottie as her first teacher. She participated in VBS and later became a youth volunteer. She has always enjoyed Sunday school classes with Mrs. Bray and has had a lot of fun in the youth group. Olivia Bresser. Olivia is graduating from Eastview High School and will be attending Concordia University to study psychology and criminal justice in hopes of becoming a forensic psychologist. Olivia has been a part of FUMC Georgetown since she was little. Her favorite memories are going on mission trips and helping different communities. F FUMC Georgetown has always been a place where she has felt like she belonged. It is home away from home for her. Thank you to everyone at church for supporting me. Gunner Clapper. Gunner is graduating from Georgetown High School and will be attending Texas A&M International with a scholarship to play golf. Gunner has memories of FUMC starting with the days in the three-year-old class at the Learning Tree. He attended VBS every summer through elementary school and was also involved in the youth program. Gunnar confirmed his faith in, in our Lord Jesus Christ at FUMC. He has participated in 4-H, FFA, UIL golf, and was involved in several other, several other sports, including team roping during his school career. Gunnar is excited for the opportunity to play golf competitively and has great memories of FUMC and making friends along the way. Max Gibson. Max is graduating from Cedar Ridge High School in Round Rock. He will be attending Texas A&M Corpus Christi his freshman year and will transfer to Texas A&M College Station his sophomore year. Max plans to study society, eth society, ethics, and law. Max tells us, my time and experience at FUMC Georgetown have shaped the person I have become and will continue to guide me and the decisions I make in the future. As a part of children's ministry, I participated in, vac in Vacation Bible School, Way of the Child, the Children's Handbell Choir, served as an acolyte, and volunteered with my family at the groundbreaking of the community garden. As a preteen, I enjoyed the Bible study and discussion and many fun activities with the youth group. I feel blessed to have, I feel blessed to have, the exper have experienced confirmation with many of my close FUMC Georgetown friends. During my time as a member of the youth group, I went on many mission trips, participated in ramp builds, served 
the community during D-Now and most recently helped build beds with Sleep in Heavenly Peace. I am thankful for our Director of Student Ministries who helps us build a strong spiritual foundation but is also a mentor and role model. I am grateful for this church and the commitment they have for investing in the youth. I will, I will miss my FUMC Georgetown family, but I look forward to my future. Ethan Griffiths. Ethan is, gradu is a graduating senior who has been homeschooled since middle school. He will also graduate fall 2021 from Austin Community College with his associates in computer science. He plans on transferring to Texas A&M Central Texas to complete his bachelor degrees in computer science. Ethan has been a member of FUMC Youth Group for seven years and a senior high leader for the last three years. He has attended several mission trips, assisted in ramp building projects, and helped build beds for the Georgetown chapter of Sleep in Heavenly Peace. He has also shared his gifts with the Stirring and the F FUMC Youth Band. Connor Heffernan. Connor graduated from Georgetown High School in January to enroll early at Baylor University where he is a member of the football team. He is considering a major in finance at this time. Connor is a lifelong member of FUMC Georgetown. When he was younger, he served as an acolyte for the 830 service for several years. As a member of MYF, Connor participated in mission trips and local community service projects. Leighton Landreth. Leighton will be graduating from the Georgetown High School this May and then attending Vernon College to study business and play soft, softball on a full ride scholarship. Leighton has been attending FUMC since she was baptized here at just a few months old. Leighton also went to preschool here at the Learning Tree. Leighton learned God's love and has grown so much in God's grace here. Being a part of the youth group has been the most rewarding part of being a member of here at FUMC. It has given her the most amazing friends and relationships, as well as so many fun memories. Leighton would like to thank FUMC for, for the church family God has blessed her with, and FUMC will always hold a special, special place in her heart. Samantha Miller. Sam will be attending Trinity University in the fall, where she is committed to play tennis and will be majoring in history and education. Some of my favorite memories from FUMC are times with the youth group where we did fun activities like walking over to 600 Degrees Pizza and then spending time walking around the square with friends. I also have wonderful memories of going to church with my family in the sanctuary and have missed that during this pandemic year. I would especially like to thank Kenny for his fellowship and support over the years, and I would like to also thank Pastor Yvonne for her leadership and messages to us in the sanctuary. Ryan Raglan. After graduating from homeschool, Ryan is heading to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona, along with a double major of space physics and aerospace engineering. He will be in the Air Force ROTC with hopes of set on joining Space Force after earning his first degree. Some of his favorite memories here at FUMC are of Sunday evening activities and mission trips. Ryan, Ryan would like to thank his church family for continued support and prayers. Being a part of all things FUMC has made a difference and continues to shape who he is. Emily Sullivan. My connection with this church started when I was baptized as a baby. I attended the Learning Tree Preschool, VBS each summer, and have played the cello in the church orchestra. One of my Mimi's favorite stories is when I took her into the sanctuary and told her that was where God lives. I will attend the University of North Texas in the fall. I've read over this list several times, and I still get choked up. Uh, when, I, when I read the accomplishments and the memories that we've had with these students. So I would like to add just a couple more pearls of wisdom uh, for this graduating class. You're going to mess up. You will sleep through an alarm, make questionable fashion choices, not eat the way you should. Maybe you didn't put enough time studying for that test. Sometimes you might not make the right choices. Whatever it is, 
show yourself some grace. We all make mistakes. It's how we learn from our mistakes that's the difference. Do we continue making the same choices or do we reevaluate those choices? Next, this is your church family. You can always come home. We will always be here for you. You are always part of this youth group. We want to hear from you and how you are doing and be there in the good times and the bad. If times get hard, please know that you always have a seat here. You will always have me by your side. I genuinely care about you. I will always be here to laugh with you, cry with you, encourage you, or just to listen to you. I have told you from the beginning that I will never judge you or condemn you. I have pledged to walk with you on this journey, and that does not end when you graduate. If I can ever help you with anything, I will do whatever I can to help. And lastly, you are a beloved child of God. You've grown up in this church hearing it, and I wanted you to hear it again. This has been a year that has affected all of us, especially you seniors. As you head off to school, you will have things that don't go your way. Maybe it's a roommate issue. Maybe it's self-doubt. We're not feeling smart enough. And when these moments happen, I pray that you will remember the love that God has for you. Take some time. Spend several minutes just letting go. Find a quiet, peaceful place and remember. And you've heard these words from our pastor every time she opens a service. You are holy. You are sacred. You are valued. You are worthy. And you are God's beloved child. Friends, will you join me as we pray over these amazing students? A holy and gracious God, we thank you for the ways in which this congregation has embraced these students from their earliest moments to this milestone. We thank you for the ways they have grown, the ways they have emerged as your beloved children in new and exciting ways. But God, we also thank you for the ways in which we have grown because of them. We have learned much from these students. They have shaped who we are, and they will continue to shape those who have the joy of being in their circles. So God, I ask your prayer to be upon them that you would surround them with your protection, that you would continue to be at work in their lives in ways that they can't even begin to imagine today. Above all, God, remind them each and every day, each and every moment, that they are indeed your beloved children. We offer them into your care. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A sky without a north star, ship without an anchor, caught up in the current. Heart is prone to wander. All the roads I've taken lead me back to nowhere. When you're the destination and you're the way to get there, you can have it all. Be the song I sing. Be my guide.
Will you join with me in our prayer for illumination? Gracious Lord, help us to so hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 11. I have made your name known to those whom you have gave, given me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you have gave me have given to them, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O oh, holy and gracious God, May the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For our graduating seniors, commencement is a much-awaited and much-anticipated milestone. As the children noted, they are finished with school, at least with the required part of their education. And it is an accomplishment. It is the culmination of years of learning, study, and growth. It is both an ending and a beginning. These students are standing at a threshold, preparing to step from all that is known and familiar into brand new territory with unknown possibilities. From here, each of our students will continue their education, as they've shared with us, pursuing a college degree, with many continuing to engage in sports. From here, the world is wide open with incredible opportunities, choices to be made, decisions that will map out at least the initial pathway of adulthood and all that comes with it. I have to confess to you that when I graduated from high school, I dreaded the what are you going to do question. 
We ask about future plans as though every student has envisioned the details of that future and fully understands all the steps it takes to get there. And while we did ask about their plans and the students shared their plans with us, I want to take us in a little bit different direction. I want to know who you want to be, not what, but who. Whether Kenny was blatantly obvious or approached this with stealth, every lesson, every conversation, every discussion was meant to help you know yourself as God's beloved child. And then to imagine what it meant for you to be the person you were created and called to be. Now that's different from saying that you were created to be a scientist or financial expert, a lawyer, a teacher, a designer, or a business manager. It's digging deeper into what kind of person you will be in those differing career paths or roles. You know, our Bible never mentions graduation. The service itself of commencement, or more for formally, the baccalaureate service, originated at the University of Oxford in 1432. Every student, or bachelor, was required to deliver a sermon in Latin as part of their academic requirements. Imagine that for a moment. Even if you did it in English, what would you say in your sermon? Our scripture reading today comes at the close of Jesus' farewell discourse in John's Gospel. This particular section is not a sermon, but perhaps a closing prayer. Jesus offers these words for his disciples just before he is arrested. It signals both an ending and a beginning, a transition from what was known and understood before into a future that is less known and still unfolding. We might even think of it as a graduation prayer for the disciples. In the time they have been with Jesus, they have had quite an education, observing, listening, and yes, doing the work of ministry, under the tutelage of their teacher. But Jesus is leaving. At least he will not be with them in the same human way he had until now. It's somewhat, somewhat like the emotions I imagine our students are feel, feeling as they think about all of their close friends from high school, all of whom have plans to go in different directions following graduation. Things will not be the same. But the prayer continues past our reading today. It goes on with Jesus asking of God, saying, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Friends, students, you also are being sent into the world all of us, actually, have been sent into the world. A world that will pull you to be one way, to be successful and mighty and highly regarded for your skills and accomplishments. You know, Jesus was well aware that the world he entered into did not know what to make of him. He knew he would be killed and hated because of the things he taught the truth he taught. He knew the world would, as John reports, hate the disciples. Now, I'm going to guess that our students didn't make their post-high school plans based on whether or not they would be hated. I also want to be clear that when we talk about the world, we're talking about the human component, not the created environment. World and earth are not the same. And so our students, all of you, are being sent into the world, not for your sake, not for my sake, not for your parents' sake, but for the same reason each and every one of us 
are sent for the sake of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is we are sent to live in a loving relationship with one another as Christ taught and modeled. We are to love one another, care for one another, support one another, tend to one another. We are asked to put our needs aside for the sake of those we encounter. That's what we are called to be. And we are called to be that in a world, a society, that really wants to compete with us. To be better than we are. Smarter, wealthier, more cunning, more mighty. And yes, more selfish and self-serving. Jesus describes the kind of mutually supportive love and care we are to have together as he prays. He says, they were yours, and you gave them to me. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them. They know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given to me, so that they may be one as we are one. Relationship between Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit is is an example, a model for all of us to look out for, care for, support, love, and nurture one another. As our students graduate high school and move into this next chapter of their lives, They're going to face enormous pressure to stand out, to stand alone, and shine. The world really wants them to do that, or at least to try. Yet, as Jesus modeled and the disciples discovered, our orientation towards the best in one another, rather than only in ourselves, is the blueprint for the life that God calls us to, the life that God intends for each of us. Even as it is counter to the ways of the world, it is life-giving for those who embrace this idea, this concept, this understanding of mutual love and care. I am excited for these students as they begin this part of their journey. And I pray that each of you will focus more on who you choose to be and allow that choice of personhood and character to influence all that you will ultimately do. Like the disciples, you have been and will continue to be equipped for all that God imagines for you and for your life. Friends, I pray that you will seek to follow this God who calls you, equips you, loves you, and cares for you. And that you do that by caring more for those around you than you do for yourself. This is my prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. What an incredible service this has been. Uh, As I heard Kenny talk about these students, I saw their pictures and heard their stories. Uh, I'm so impressed by their gifts and graces, by what they have done and by what they plan to do. And uh, as they they graduate, uh, they're graduating from from this part of their school life, but they're not graduating from the church. We're going to continue to be their church family and pray for them and, and support them in any ways that we can. We're also going to claim the ministries uh, that they do wherever they go, uh, wherever they go to share God's love, because that's who we are as a family of faith. And, and not just wherever they go, but wherever we go. Um, we are so grateful for all the ministries, all the ways that you concretely share God's love in, in our community and, and beyond. And we're grateful for the way that you help us do that as a church. Uh, now is the time when we, we talk about our offering um, and Uh, There are three different ways that you can give to the church. They're on the screen in front of you. 
Uh, you can text to give. Uh, you can go to our website and, and give directly that way. Uh, or you can send a check in to the, the, to the church office. All of those ways are, are so very important uh, for us in, in being able to, to be the church that you call us to be, that God calls us to be. And so we give you thanks. As we prepare to, to receive those gifts this week, I would ask you to join me in a time of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you continue to bless us. And we ask that you would continue to bless these students and as they go forth to, to be a blessing in the world. We ask that you would bless the gifts which we will be receiving. Multiply them uh, and help us to scatter them in ways that will show your love and our love throughout this world. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us for worship today and for helping us as we celebrate our seniors and all that life has in store for them. We are so excited uh, for all that God has done and will continue to do in their lives. And as we go forth, I want to share just a bit more of that prayer that Jesus prayed from the Gospel of John. Again, praying to God, he says, I ask not only on behalf of these but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. Friends, that's our calling, to share God's love, to invite people to know this God who loves them, to know this God who sees them just as God sees us as beloved children. Go forth and offer that love to everyone you meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I find my strength. I find my hope. I find my help. In Christ alone, when fear assails, when darkness falls, 